So I'm happy that you, you're here. God has allowed you to be here, so we praise God for that. I know that uh, uh, our brother Ton already opened in a word of prayer, pero can we just continue in an attitude of prayer? Can we just pray again? Sige, let's pray. Panginoon, maraming salamat po sa gabing ito na binigay mo sa amin. Thank you for just allowing us to be here, to be with our friends, to be with this big family. And Lord, thank you that we have another opportunity to learn from you. I pray, dear God, na as we talk about this very important topic of overcoming self-condemnation, Lord, this is a very real topic. And I pray na yung aming pag-uusapan ngayon would just really speak to each one of us. Lord, I pray na lahat ng mabanggit ngayon, everything that I would say, Lord, would come from you. I pray, Lord, na you would guide my words. Lord, that you would be honored and glorified. And Lord, just really teach us valuable truths. Uh, of, of your word. And I pray, Lord, that hindi lang siya maging realization, but that you would allow us to apply them in our lives. So, Father, we thank you, and we just ask, Lord God, also that you would protect us. We know that the enemy would always just want to cause distraction and harm and just to keep us away from you. And so, Lord, we pray in Jesus' name that you would bind the enemy and just really allow us to focus on you and you alone. Salamat, Panginoon. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, so our topic is overcoming condemnation. Lord, what if I fail? Uh, what if I fail God? Kanina, nung kumakanta tayo, sabi ko, parang kailangang palitan yung slide. Kasi it's not, what if I fail? Because we will fail. That is a guarantee. And the question is, when we fail, what now? Because you and I, we are flawed, we will make mistakes, and we will fail. What do we do then? And so I hope our time together will just really speak to each one of us. Now, meron ba kayong ginawa sa buhay ninyo? You know, when you look back, is there anything that you've done in your life, maybe recent or in a distant past, that you regretted doing? <laughs> Gusto yung share sa katabi ninyo. <laughs> uh, yung talagang... Shucks. Face palm. Ano yan? Palm face. Ano? Face palm. Right? Bakit ko ginawa yun? Bakit ko sinabi yun? Uh. Lalo na ngayon sa panahon ng, ng, ng video, social... Meron na ba dito na tulfo na? <laughs> Hinashtag tulfo kayo, sinumbo kayo. I said, oh man, bakit ko ginawa yun? Okay, magalala. Merong attorney dito, si attorney Ton. O, <laughs> tawagin nyo. Anyway, um, last month, last month, nagda-drive ako and I had uh, uh, Bluetooth uh, communication on me. And uh, while I was driving, mayroong biglang isang uh, Innova na biglang, nag, biglang so dire-diretso ako, bigla siyang kumat talaga sa akin, gumano, as in, nag-swerve, and muntik ko na siyang mabanga, and muntik na kaming mag- because I was moving a, a bit fast, and he just really uh, swerved uh, 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 right away sa, sa harap ko. And so, I got really jolted, and uh, tumigil ako sa, sa tabi niya, minuksan ko yung bintana, Talagang I was shouting at the top of my lungs, Bakit ka biglang lumiko? Muntik na kita mabangga! Tapos galit na galit pa siya sa akin. Hindi ko kasalanan. Huh? Right? And then kasi ang nangyari is that there was a jeepney in front of him na biglang tumigil and so iniwasan niya, so napunta siya sa lane ko and so sinasabi niya, kasalanan nun jeep. Sabi niya, kung gusto mo, samahan kita. Kausapin mo yung jeep. As in, galit na galit pa siya sa akin talaga. So, we were in that, hindi, sabi ko, mali ka, mali ka, ikaw biglang gumunod. Tapos nakatingin lang siya sa akin, nag-apologize na yung girlfriend niya. Sa utak ko, kung ano nung sinasabi ko, buti pa yung girlfriend mo, marunong mag-sorry. You know? So, talaga yung utak ko, talagang inis na inis na. Tapos biglang, uh, uh, tumawag yung wife ko doon sa com. So, hello? Eh, sabi ko, Galit na galit ako. So, tinuloy ko lang yung, yung, yung pagsigaw ko and then biglang, uh, hello, hello, it's bilang nawala. No? So, dire-direcho lang ako. And finally, I just let it go. I went home. Pagdating ko sa bahay, sabi ko sa wife ko, ah, ah, sabi niya, huh? Ikaw, tumawag ka? Sabi niya, hindi. 
Like, hindi, hindi ko yung tumawag kanina. Hindi. Sinong tumawag sa akin kanina habang sumisigaw ako doon sa driver? Right? And then, pag tingin ko ng phone ko, tingin ako yung recent phone calls, assistant ni Pastor Ricky. <laughs> so, tumawag ako kagad sa kanya. Sabi ko, Hi, Mitch. <laughs> tumawag ka ba? Ay, yes, Pastor Omar. Uh, may narinig ka bang uh, nagsisigawan? <laughs> Sabi niya, uh, uh, tumawag ako, pero parang nasa daan ka, so, ewan ko, parang may discussion na nangyayari. Sabi ko, ah, sorry ha, kasi galit na galit ako. Ay, hindi, hindi ko naman narinig masyado. Hindi naman audible. Sabi ko, ah, ganun ba? Hindi mo narinig? Oh, wala akong ginawa. Things I regret doing. Losing my temper. Do you lose your temper? Has it put you in such a bad spot? <laughs> a lot of times. One of, the few, one of the many things that I fail in in my life. My temper. Today we're going to talk about this. So what happens when we fail? What do we do? And how do we overcome self-condemnation? And we're going to look at two characters. Actually, uh, we've been talking about two characters no? in comparison to. But t- today, we want to talk about three characters, actually. And that would be Peter, Judas, and me. And when I say me, that's you also. <laughs> Peter, Judas, and me. Because somehow, you and I will be able to relate to either of them or to both of them. And that puts us also on the spot. Peter, Judas, and me. How many of you are named Peter? Peter. Yes, Pastor Peter. Ay, wala pa si Pastor Peter dito. Okay. Wala. But do you know people who are named Peter? Yeah, right? Do you know anyone named Judas? Do you have a friend? Or nickname nyo lang sa kanya. Right? I'm sure you know people that are named Peter, but I don't know if you know anyone named Judas, right? Why would people name their sons Peter and not Judas? What about what is it about Judas na ayo pangalanan ng mga magulang ang kanilang anak na Judas? What is Judas known for? What? Treachery. Treachery? Betrayal? Question. Didn't Peter also betray Jesus? So, what's the difference? Bakit okay lang tawagin ng isang tao na Peter? Bakit hindi pwedeng Judas? Eh, pareho lang naman lang binetray si Jesus. In fact, all of, all of the disciples left Jesus in his most crucial hour, right? And that makes them all somehow, they, that, that's an act of betrayal. When Christ would have them there by his side, they all left. And I guess in a sense, we too are guilty. Because there are times that we deny Christ in our lives. Sige, hindi na kayo. Ako na lang. Peter, Judas, and me. Peter and Judas, actually they have a lot of similarities. And I can see those, 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 those things present in my life as well. See, see Peter and see Judas, they, were both, they, they, they both were called and responded to Jesus. Tama ba? Right? They were both called and they, they, they both responded to Jesus. And that invitation to, to, to respond to Christ is the same opportunity that we have also. You see, all of us are invited by Christ, to, are called by Christ. Right? To respond to him. Right? And they, they actually took that opportunity. Peter and Judas were both on the same boat and they, they responded to Jesus. They were both called by Jesus and responded to him. That's one of their similarities. Another similarity is both learned from Jesus and were immersed in the truth. Right? Who, who better else can you learn from than Jesus himself? 
kahit pagsamasamay mo lahat ng mga theologians dito, wala pa rin tatalo kay Peter at kay Judas because they learn from the Master Himself. Not only they, did they hear second hand what He was saying, first hand they heard Jesus, right? And they would have learned a lot. Wow. And you know, you and I, we can also learn a lot, right? You and I, some of us are really uh, students of the Word. I hope all of us. Right? But some are so diligent and studying God's word and in the word. And, and that, that puts us in the same boat as Peter and Judas as well. Right? Because they, they learn from Jesus. We also learn from Jesus. Right? We are also immersed in the truth. Both of them, as they were going around with Jesus, both of them saw Jesus' miracles. I think you and I, we also see Jesus' miracles. Have Jesus done miracles in your life? Just look at yourself. You are a miracle, right? We are miracles and we see the, the miracles of Christ. And, and again, we're the same with them. We see the miracles of Christ. Both served and, was empowered and were empowered by Jesus. They both served. They, for three years, they were with Jesus day in, day out. They were serving with him. And most of you here, one way or another, you have served Christ. Our volunteers at the back, they've, they've served Jesus, right? And so we're, we're all the same as Peter and Judas. So what's different? Why do we see Judas in such a bad light? And Peter in a different light. Or ourselves, maybe you're saying, I'm not a Judas, right? If anything, we want to emulate, gusto ko parang, parang si Peter, right? Peter the rock, I want to be like him. Or we're inspired by his, by his life. All these good things that they shared, we share with them. And yet, like them, we also fail. And these things we share with them, all the good things. But Peter and Judas also failed. And like them, we failed. When I was a new believer, I believe that was back in 2005. Okay. Uh, I was a new Christian. I was, I was uh, so passionate for the Lord. I was so hungry. And uh, our family, uh, our extended family, started a business in, in Hong Kong. And uh, we did uh, uh, just a business there, and it involved some, some uh, substantial amount of money. So family members had to fly in and out just to be there to monitor the operation. So I was asked to, to be one of those who will go there. So I was there for about, uh, about a month in Hong Kong. And when I was there, wala akong makausap kasi hindi ako nakakaintindi ng Chinese. Right? So, I mean, you know, I was the only one there. Wala akong ibang kausap. Day in, day out, I would open the shop and then I would close it. So, nakakalabas ako sa Hong Kong, gabi na. And wala na akong nagagawa. Dadiretso na lang ako sa, sa, sa bahay, sa condo. And um, what I would do was, every day, I would be in the shop and I would just play Christian music. Right? Three times ako nagka-quiet time. Doon sa shop. Ah, sino dito? Four times. Uh, three times. Wala akong ibang magawa ko, hindi mag-quiet time. Bung araw, I was saturated with Christian music, right? And I was just there. I was having the time of my life. And then, um, on the third week, uh, meron akong, merong isang pumasok sa shop. And nasa, mataas kasi yung counter namin. No? It was a remittance firm, right? So, it was just a counter when people just would, would come in and out and there was this this counter na mataas and so I was down there and then I heard a female voice that's Pinoy so nagulat ako kasi Pinoy because usually what, what, Pinoy naman talaga no? pero kasi sila yung nagpaparimit but then this 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 lady pas, pa close na kami and then this lady just um, this lady just uh, spoke humabol siya bago kami mag-close and then when I looked up uh, single pa ako nito no? <laughs> medyo maganda yung babae I'll be honest, she was beautiful. And I was single, and wala ko ibang makausap, and, 
You know, and sabi niya, Hi, pwede mo magparimit? Ko, sure. <laughs> of course. Right? And then, sabi niya, oh, taga saan ka? Ngayon lang kita nakita dito. Oh, kami yung shop doon sa kabila. And ganyan, ganyan. So we had small talk. Long story short, she said, oh, um, gusto mong sumama sa amin? Um, sumama sa amin sa, ng mga friends ko. We're going out. Sabi ko, wow, wala akong kausap dito sa Hong Kong for three weeks. Finally, meron na akong magiging mga kaibigan, right? Plus, maganda yung babae. Right? And so, I, I, I said, sure. No? So we exchanged numbers. And then, Um, umuwi ako and then excited na ako and pag uwi ko sa bahay nantay ko lang yung text ko ano na yung details right and then finally nag follow up ako kasi wala pang text sabi ko um, so what, what's the plan and then she said uh, kasi ano eh nag cancel yung friends ko eh kung gusto mo kung gusto mo uh, mag meet na lang tayo sa Starbucks tayong dalawa uh, and nag quiet time ako three times I went. Pagdating ko doon, siniran ko ng gospel. <laughs> Don't clap. <laughs> siniran ko ng gospel. Ang sabi niya, wow, you're unlike any guy I've met here in Hong Kong. Most men would just like to take advantage of me. Iba ka. In short, type kita. So sabi ko, shucks. Sabi ko, okay, thank you. <laughs> Tapos, goodbye na kami, goodbye na. The next day, nag-text ulit. Sabi niya, gusto mo kong samahan? Okay, masyado mahaba ang kwento. So shortcut ko na lang. One thing led to another. There was an opportunity for me to actually rescue her from men who were taking, wanting to take advantage of her because she was drunk. And so, tumawag siya sa akin, can you save me? And here I am feeling I'm the, you know, the, 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 the knight in shining armor. And so I went to her rescue. And long story short, we, we fell into immorality. 2005. That was the height of... Sino sa inyo, ewan ko kung matagal ng kristyano, uh, more than five years. Naalala nyo ba yung panahon na you were still a new Christian and you're just so on fire for the Lord? Naalala nyo ba yun? Talagang, I love Jesus. Yun yung feeling ko noon eh. Kasi bagong kristyano lang ako, no? one year old Christian. And I was like, oh, I'm so on fire for Jesus. And then that happened. I fell into immorality. And here I was, I want to serve you, Lord. I want to go full time. I want to I, I wanna live my life for you. And all of a sudden, boom, this happened. And sabi ko sa kanya, actually, it's not just one time. Multiple times. I'm, I'm, I'm not even uh, sensationalizing this. There was a point in time where she said, I'm confused. You've been talking about Jesus, but you're doing another thing. Ano ba talaga? And I felt really miserable. And finally I said, I have to cut it. Three weeks, that was the last, everything happened in the last week. And then I went home and I was so miserable. First three weeks, I was, wow, okay, okay, God, eh, wow. Ang sarap nitong feeling with God, three times quiet time, praise and worship the whole day. And then all of a sudden, just last week before, before I came home to the Philippines, boom, this happened. The first thing I did was I called my disciples, I called Paul. I failed miserably. And he met me in a restaurant in Green Hills, and there I was, niya ako makapagsalita, yak ako na yak sarap niya. And he was like, he was just comforting me and 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 uh, advising me and counseling me. And finally, I cut off uh, conversations with the, with this lady, and I apologized for for being a bad testimony of what a Christian should be. Ten years later, not ten years later. 
what, what, what uh, 15 years later, I'm here preaching to you. You see, that, that big mistake could have been a, a point in my life where I would have headed the wrong direction. But God in his grace taught me how to respond to failure. You see, failure, it doesn't have to be the big things like this. Denying Christ need not be the sensational, I fell into immorality or, or I, I killed someone or whatever. It can be the small things in our daily lives. When we drive to work, when we sit here and our thoughts are, are not of God, or when we're in the office and we think ill of an office mate, or we lost after women, or we lost after men, or I don't know. It doesn't have to be the big things. We deny Christ when, when, when we miss the mark, when we sin. I realize that we have such a big enemy in our lives, and so did Paul and Judas. Both of them were influenced by Satan. Remember what happened in, in the time that um, Judas was to betray Jesus. It said that sent Satan entered into Judas, who was called Iscariot, belonged to the number of the twelve. And he went away and discussed with the chief priests and officers how he might betray him to them. And maybe some of us were saying, kaya pala nagawa ni Judas because he na control na siya ni, ni Satan. Eh. But remember, even before this incident, Judas was actually stealing money from the treasury of the group. And he was in sin. He wasn't disclosing sin and, and he was keeping that. And, you know, he, he had this secret sin and he continued to be with Jesus. Parang tayo lang, no? You know, some, some of us have these secret sins and, and we just continue to, oh, worship Jesus, but then we don't want to let go of that sin. Right? And so, we also are, are, are under attack. And, and so was Peter. Peter, Peter was, Jesus was saying, I'm, I'm about to die. I'm about to go to Calvary and this is what's going to happen. And Peter goes, no, Jesus, wag mo nang gawin yan. Hindi mo kailangan pagdaanan yan. And Jesus says, get behind me, Satan. You are a stumbling block to me for you are not setting your mind on God's interest but, but man's. Even, even Peter was, was being influenced by Satan. Jesus told Peter, he said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I've prayed for you. Uh, here, Satan was wanting just to do harm to Peter. And again, like them, yeah, we saw the miracles. Yeah, we, we, we learn about Christ. Yeah, we see the miracles also. Yeah, we are called. Yes, we serve. But also, we are vulnerable to the attacks of the enemy. Right? And we are, we are, we are, influ- we have such a big foe. And like both of them, you and I, we make mistakes and betray Christ. And this is the reality. How do we respond when you and I, when you and I fail? Maybe you're saying, well, you know what? I'm not really, I'm not really a Judas. I'm more a Peter. Yeah, there are some similarities, but I'm not as bad as Judas. Maybe I'm, I'm more like a Peter. I, I wanted to take us into, into some, some encounters of Peter and, and, and Jesus. And, and maybe we can learn from those encounters. You see, Jesus was with his disciples, and he was, he was telling them that... He was telling them that... Um, Parang nagbago yung slides ko. Hold on. All 
Okay. So he was telling them that that uh, that he was about to, to, to die, that his time has come. And this is the time that he had the Lord's Supper with his disciples. And he washed their feet. And he, he actually confronted Judas and said, what you're going to do, do quickly. And Judas left and went to betray Jesus. And then he was with his disciples. And then the, this is what Jesus said. He said, little children, yet a little while I am with you. You will seek me, and just as I said to the Jews, so now I also say to you, where I am going, you cannot, you cannot come. Right. So there you go. You are playing slide go, the Peter and us. And so we're saying, well, you know, I'm not, I'm not really a Judas. Maybe I'm, you know, a bit like Peter. And so when Jesus said that, Peter said to him, Lord, where are you going? And Jesus answered him, where I am going, you cannot follow me. Follow me now, but you will follow afterward. And Peter said to him, Peter said to him, Lord, why can I not follow you now? I will lay down my life for you. And Jesus answered, Peter, will you lay down your life for me? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me three times. I don't know if you felt the weight of that question. Right? I don't know. You know, you know I, can, I can relate so much with Peter. Jesus, susundan kita. I will follow you. I want to give my life for you. Right? Is that your desire? Yung mga nasarap lang. Okay. Is that your desire to follow Jesus wherever He goes? Is that your desire to, to, to lay down your life for Jesus? And a sobering question is, talaga? Di nga. Will you really lay down your life for Christ? Will you really surrender all? Isn't that a sobering question to us? Are we really willing to surrender all? And that was the question to Peter. Will you lay down your life for me? You see, sometimes, like Peter, ano tayo eh? yung, yung emotion natin gets the best of us. We, and, and I tell you, that is one of the most encouraging thing to see that you and I were just so passionate to, to live our life for Jesus. But sometimes we have a wrong understanding that our Christianity is based on our own effort, on our own desire. Right? Na, na hindi, what can I do for Jesus? Jesus, this is what I'll do for you. This is what I'll do for you. And she was saying, no, no, no. It's not about what you can do for me. But it's what I can do for you. It's about what Christ has done for each of us. You see, the impetus to follow Christ is not based on our ability of what and, and on what we can do for Him, but on what He did for us. Okay, sabi ni Jesus, I'm going to go somewhere. And that means I'm going to finish the work on the cross hindi nyo pwedeng gawin yun kasi ako lang ang pwedeng makagawa nun. To finish the work on the cross. And when I have done that, then you can follow me. Right? Then you can follow. And that's what he, he said about Peter. But sometimes Peter is just so emotional. No, no, no. I'll do this for you, Jesus. I'll do this for you. And Jesus says, really? Truly, truly, I say to you, the rooster will not crow till you have denied me Three times. Sometimes discouraging when we fail. Hindi sometimes, actually a lot of time. All the time. It's discouraging when we fail, no? When we make mistakes. And sometimes we stay down. You know, I remember uh, my disciple Paul, he challenged me to go full-time. Sabi niya, Omar, would you pray about going full-time? And uh, my heart was so passionate about the, the singles ministry back then. Um, it was back in 2007 or 8, 2008, early 2008. 
we were about to speak in a retreat and I was behind him, nakisabay ako sa kanya. He looked back and said, Omar, where's your heart? I said, in the singles ministry. And he said, oh, why don't you pray about going full-time? We need somebody to champion that ministry. And I said, okay, I'll pray about it. After two weeks, Paul calls me and says, Omar, did you pray about it? I said, no. <laughs> and he said, huh? And yeah, oh, you, you go ahead and pray about it. And you know, that night when he followed up with me, sa totoo lang, medyo dry spell eh. Medyo hindi tama yung timpla ng puso ko. And my, my, I felt that I was not living the way I should be in accordance to God's word. So sabi ko, I prayed that night and sabi ko, Lord, talaga bang tinatawag mo ako sa ministry? Kasi tira mo naman buhay ko. Ito ba talaga ang gusto mong gamitin sa ministry? I don't think I deserve to be in ministry. And you know, I felt God impress in my heart. And what he said was, Omar, that's where I want you to begin. To understand that you are not worthy for my ministry. But only through, by, through my grace, I will empower you to serve me. Because if I'm feeling that, no, you know, I'm, I'm good, I'm holy, I've done something, and I'm going to do it all for Jesus, then a lot of times that comes from a selfish point in ourselves. Right? If we feel that Christianity is about how good we are, right, or, oh, mabait akong Christian if I get to read my Bible seven times a week. Right? I'm, I'm, di ako, di ako mabait na Christian pag four times lang eh. And sometimes we measure based on, on, on the externals. But our Christianity is not based on our ability to do things for God, but on what He has done for us. And when we fail, these are the two ways that you and I respond. Two ways we respond. And this is also spells the difference between Peter and Judas. This tells us why we name our children Peter and not Judas. Okay? Well, the Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 8-9, to nine, uh, this is the Apostle Paul talking. The context of this is Paul is writing to the church in Corinth. And he was actually admonishing them, rebuking them. Pero si Paul, medyo napatalas yung mga salita niya. So he was, I guess, leaning towards the truthful side, but his intentions were good. He wanted to admonish them, rebuke them, so that they would, they would um, turn for the better. Pero the people, the, the, the Christians in Corinth or, or the church, actually, some of them felt bad. Ayaw nila nung kinokorek sila ng ganun eh. So naalatan sila sa salita ni Paul. Parang, hindi namin gusto yun ha. That's the context, right? And so, they weren't responding to Paul. And Paul was already distraught. Tama ba yung ginawa ko? Nakinorek ko sila? Right? And he was saying, Teka, I mean, I meant well. I wanted to teach them the right things. But was it, was it wrong that I corrected them? So, you know, he was so perplexed. Actually, ayaw na nga niya bumalik sa Corinth. Eh. Kakansin na niya yung trip niya pabalik. Kasi ayaw na niya magkaroon pa ng, ng, ng problema or ng issue. And then finally, nag-respond in church in Corinth. So he was saying here in verse 8, even if I caused you sorrow by my letter, I do not regret it. Though I did regret it, though I did regret it, I see that my letter hurt you, but only for a little while. Yet now I am happy, not because you were made sorry, but because your sorrow led you to repentance. For you became sorrowful as God intended, and so were not harmed in any way by us. For the sorrow that is according to the will of God produces a repentance without regret, leading to salvation, but the sorrow of the world produces death. When we fail, when we make mistakes, when we sin, there are two ways that you and I can respond or will respond. Either we will have a worldly sorrow that leads to death or a godly sorrow that leads to repentance. And so when we feel, paano ba tayo nag-respond? That's, that's a good question to ask. 
How do you respond when you make mistakes? Isipin niyo na lang. Ito yung attitude na, I'm not sorry I did it. I'm sorry I got caught. Right? Na-feel niyo na ba yon? Na talagang hindi naman kayo sorry. Pero hassle na huli kayo. Right? Case in point. Road rage. Di ba? I mean, again, that is my problem. Please do not judge me. Problema ko talaga yan. One time, I was about to enter a, an intersection and then there was this, this jeepney na nakita ng papasok ako, hindi siya nakailaw, and so pumasok, hindi ko siya nakita, na blindside ako. And then dire-diretso siya. Nung nakita niya, nakaustina ako, talagang dire-diretso niya. And my, my, my daughter was actually on that side, ng muntik ng tamaan. And so, pag diretso yung traffic naman, so ginawa ko, binaba ko siya. Right? Binigyan ko siya ng gospel track. The joke lang. <laughs> so I, give him a, I gave him a piece of my mind. Not a piece. Uh, volumes of my mind. Then I went back. And my wife knew better. Hinimas lang niya ako, hindi na siya nagsalita. Sa totoo lang, gusto na niya akong <laughs> ipatulfo. <laughs> we were about to go to the mall. It was in Shaw Boulevard. Kakanan na lang kami, konti na lang. Mall na, nangyari pa yon. And when we got down, sabi ko sa wife ko, Honey, please go down. Una na kayo. I'm just gonna be here. And I wanted to come down kasi nanginginig ako sa galit eh. And then, I had a conviction in my heart. Sabi ko, bakit ba ako, bakit ba ako natauhan? Bakit ba ako biglang tumiklop? Umalis na lang ako eh. Sabi ko, bakit, bakit ba ako nag-withdraw? And the honest answer was, paano ko may makakita? Paano ko may nag-video? Nakakahiya. When the answer should have been, kasi sinasaktan ko ang Diyos when I do not respond properly. Right? But a lot of times, our sorrow is kasi may consequence na parating. Kaya tayo bilang shock. Sorry. Right? It's not because I'm, I'm sorry I did this because I'm hurting God, but I'm sorry I did it because shucks, baka mawalan ako ng trabaho, baka hindi na nila ako kausapin, baka mapahiya ako. Yun, yun yung nagiging concern natin. And that is the worldly sorrow. But when we make mistakes, it should be, Lord, sorry ah, nag kita. Lord, sorry, alam ko hindi ka natuwa dun. Forgive me. That is godly sorrow that leads to repentance. Pero a lot of times, anong tinuturo sa atin ng worldly sorrow? Means na mag-iingat na lang tayo para hindi tayo mahuli. Teach us to be more cunning, to be more careful not to be caught. Kasi worldly sorrow is, I'm sorry I got caught. Not because I'm sorry because I grieved God. Judas responded in a worldly way. He was remorsed for what he did and he just wanted the easy way out and he just ended his life. He lost hope. But Peter, his desire, grabe yung desire ni Peter, gusto niya talagang mapalapit kay Jesus. Sa lahat ng mga disciples, siya lang yung sumunod, gusto kong lumapit kay Jesus. I know I, I denied him. I know I, I, I betrayed him. No, pero nasan siya? And, and you know, the circumstance around him, talagang, you know, na-overwhelm na siya eh. He was just, Peter had a bad day. Judas had a bad heart. Right? Just, Peter was, was having such a burden with, with everything that's happening. His master was caught and then uh, a centurion just, got his ear cut, and you know, they were all dispersed. It was such a whirlwind. And he was just caught in the middle of that. But Judas, he, he premeditated what he was going to do. And he took the easy way out. He took his life. And that was the difference. Peter, at the end of his life, and we saw that, 
He had godly sorrow, and yet Judas had worldly sorrow. How did Jesus, well, how does Jesus respond to our mistakes? Because that's how we respond. Either we respond to, with worldly sorrow or godly sorrow. But how does Jesus respond to us when you and I make mistakes? Romans 5.8. But God shows his love for us in this, that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. You know, here we are, we can, we can feel self-pity and condemn ourselves, but Christ, Christ doesn't condemn us. In fact, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't say, I, why will I die for you? You're a sinner. Well, while we were still sinners. Look at this. We're familiar with this verse, right? Verse 16, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. But we don't know. Alam nyo yung kasunod na verse? What's the next verse? For God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. It's funny that sometimes you and I have a tendency to have self-pity and condemn ourselves when we make mistakes. But Christ says, well, I come not to condemn you, but to save you. Here, here is how else Christ responds to our mistakes. John chapter 1, verse 8 to 9, If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. How many of you feel na pag meron kayong ginawang mali, parang hindi kayo makalapit kay Christ? Okay, dalawa lang tayo. Ayun, maraming pala tayo. Okay, good. Right? Isn't that the feeling? Na, you know, when we make a mistake, for example, last Big Friday, wala kayong ginawang kasalanan nung week. Kaya nung praise and worship, bigay na bigay. Right? Talagang, Lord, you know, you're singing your heart out. Ang ganda ng discussion nyo. Nag-degroup pa kayo. Ang saya-saya. Wow, okay ako eh. And then, meron kayong ginawang mali. So, pag din yun ang Big Friday, hindi na kayo makakanta. As if, parang, dapat ko bang kantayin yan eh. Kasi sin ko lang. Parang hindi ka makapray, parang hindi ka makapagbasa ng Bible. Why? What are you saying? Lord, I'm not performing eh. Magpa-perform muna ako. Magiging mabait muna ako. And then lalapit ako sa'yo pag mabait na ako. Di ba? Right? Wait, I'm gonna wait until, you know, and then, and then kakanta na ulit ako with all of my heart. Or I will pray again. Or bawa, minsan, oh, who wants to read in prayer? Right? Gusto nyo sana yung iba kasi alam nyo yung heart nyo parang hindi tama mag-pray. Diba? And sometimes we treat it as if it's based on how good we are or based on our performance that we condemn ourselves na hindi, hindi. Hindi ka dapat lumapit kay Jesus kasi masama ka yung nagkamali ka. But Christ says, lalo ka pang lumapit. Confess your sins. And He is faithful and just to forgive our sins and to cleanse us from some unrighteousness. Yun ba? From all unrighteousness. Come to me. All the more you come to me because in me you find grace. In me you find grace. How much more time do I have? Yes. Okay, patapos na ito. How Jesus responds to us. We are all under grace. A reminder for me always is nothing to prove, everything to improve because we're all under grace. 
So, how do we respond when we fail? How do we respond to Jesus, knowing that this is who Jesus is, this is that, that, that his grace abounds, that he, he, he cleanses us from all unrighteousness when, when we confess our sins, that he is not there to condemn us. How do we respond to a God like that? When we fail, how do we respond to Jesus? Well, first thing is this. Well, Jesus, Judas, basically what he did was, Judas threw the money to the temple and left, and he went away and hanged himself. Worldly sorrow, right? So the first practical thing that I want to share with you is this. Don't hang yourself. No, I'm serious. In quotations, don't hang. What does that mean? Right? Don't do anything stupid. Sometimes when we make mistakes, when we fail, when we sin, you know, we think, well, I blew it. Might as well blow it all the way. Sino sa inyo ganun ang attitude? Right? When we, when we lost, ah, nag na ako nung morning eh. Di buong araw, bukas na lang ulit. Panibagong araw. Pero the whole day, sasagarin ko na. Or eh, take ah, you know, I fell into immorality. Eh, di tuloy-tuloy na natin to. Eh, wala na. Point of no return eh. Right? Sometimes our attitude is, when I blow it, I blow it all the way. And we do stupid things. And it leads to our destruction. So, the reminder for us is, don't hang ourselves. It's, it's spiritual suicide to keep on just wallowing in our sin. And that's what Judas did. He, he wallowed in his sin, and it led to his, his demise. So, don't hang yourself. Well, here are some things that we can learn from, from Peter. You see, Peter, when he failed, when he denied Jesus three times, when he left Jesus, when he did all of these things, he responded differently. And let's look at what he did after. You see, in John 21, verse 2, it says here, Simon Peter Thomas, called the twin, Nathaniel of Cana in Galilee, the sons of Zebedee, and two others of his disciples were together. Right? Were together. Kapag nagkakamali kayo, or when you sin, what is our tendency? To? Iso- isolation, right? We isolate ourselves. When I sin, ayoko muna magpakita dun sa group ko sa Big Fridays kasi may ginawa akong mali Right? That is our tendency. We isolate ourselves when we make a mistake. Nako, saka na ako babalik pag medyo okay, okay na ako. Right? We isolate. And, 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 and Peter, yes, he made a mistake. Yes, perhaps, you know, the other disciples felt the same way. But what did they do? They stuck together. They stayed together. Right? And so when we fail, don't hang yourself. Do not isolate yourself. Instead, continue keeping the company of followers of Jesus. Remember, we all fail. Kahit mukhang mas okay yung isa, nagfi-fail din yan. We all fail. But let us not give up meeting with one another. Right? For the days are evil. And so they were together, they were fishing, and in verse 4 it says, Just as day was breaking, Jesus stood on the shore. Here again, the grace of Christ. Pwede niya sabihin na, Naku, yung mga disciples na yun, iniwan ako. Sa iba nalang ako magpapakita. But here Jesus was. Jesus stood on the shore, yet the disciples did not know that it was Jesus. And Jesus said to them, Children, do you have any fish? And they answered him, No. He said to them, cast the net on the right side of the boat and you will find some. So they cast it and now they were able to haul it in because of the quantity. They couldn't, they were not able to haul it in because of the quantity of fish. What were they doing? Well, they were following Jesus for three years and all of that ended. What did they do? They went back to, to fishing. What they had to do, Right? So the next practical tip for us is this. Do what you have to do. Don't be idle. Sometimes when we make mistakes, parang tumitigil ang mundo. Di ba? Parang, ah, hindi na muna ako papasok sa trabaho. 
maglilive ako five days. Kaya, kaya, kaya ba natin yun? Hindi <laughs> ko yata kaya yun. Right? Or parang, you know, di ba sa mga movies, pag nanonood kayo, yung pag may, may maling nangyayari sa buhay, pagpasok nyo dun sa bahay, parang yung mga hindi nahugas ang pinggan, ang dumidibi ng bahay, hindi, hindi ayos. Di ba? When you make mistakes, just do what you have to do. Right? Don't be idle. All the more, you will fall into self-condemnation and self-pity. Just keep on doing what you have to do and trust that God will work in and through your situation because He's a gracious God. Do what you have to do. Don't be idle. And then, the disciple whom Jesus loved, John, kit niya, no? describe niya sarili niya. Hi, I'm John, loved by Jesus. Therefore said to Peter, It is the Lord! And when Simon Peter heard that it was the Lord, he put on his outer garment, for he was stripped for work, and he threw himself into the sea. Just imagine, classic Peter. Oh, is it Jesus? I want to go to Jesus. It's not, because I denied him. Jesus. Right? I don't know if that's our attitude when we see Christ. But here we see Peter just jumping out and and we see we see his heart we see his heart and when they had finished breakfast jesus said to simon peter simon son of john do you love me more than these and he said to him eto na si 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 peter na lang at si jesus na ito and they were talking so jesus said to him simon son of john do you love me more than these? And I don't know what these mean. Maybe the fish, maybe the whole ministry. I don't know. It doesn't say. But he says, well, do you love me more than these? And Peter said, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, feed my lambs. And he said to him a second time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And he said to him, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. And he said to him, tend my sheep. If you were Jesus, what would you tell Peter? Peter, do you love me? Yes, I love you. We. Tinga. But mo kiniwan. Right? Isn't isn't that our normal reaction? Tinga. But mo kiniwan. But mo ko dininay. Di ba sabi ko sa yo? Sabi ko na sa yo eh. They deny mo ko. Three times. That's, that's human, human love or capacity. But look at Christ. Yep. You denied me. Do you love me, Peter? I want you to serve me. Tend my sheep. Feed my lambs. And the next, next thing I, I want us to remember and keep to heart is this. Remember that God throughout scriptures have used imperfect people. Ministry is not reserved only for the sinless. Otherwise, there won't be ministry. But God throughout scriptures have used imperfect people like you and I. So don't condemn yourself, right? Ito na. Medyo sakit, makirut sa puso ito. And Jesus said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? And Peter was grieved because he said to him the third time, do you love me? And he answered Jesus, Lord, alam mo naman eh. You know everything. You know that I love you. And Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Has anyone ever questioned your love for them? You have to appreciate what's in the heart of Peter. You see, si Peter, parang, parang ako, hindi ko alam kung parang kayo, pero parang ako, na I want to follow Jesus. You see, Peter, he left... He left his catch of fish 
Actually, more than that, he left his life to follow Jesus. May trade-off yun eh. Right? May trade-off yun. Malaking trade-off. He followed Jesus. He was the only one who got out of the boat to walk on water to go to Jesus. Siya lang yung gusto niyang mapalapit kay Jesus. Uy, si Jesus. Siya lang yun. None of the disciples did that. He wanted to lay down his life for him, but then Jesus says, you know, you're going to betray me three times. He wanted to defend Jesus, and then, and then, naputol yung tenga, and you know, oh man, what did I do? Right? Jesus rebuked him. He was the only one who followed Jesus when Jesus was captured. Siya lang yun. And in all of these circumstances, in all of these narratives that we see in the Bible, you see Peter just wanting to be close to Jesus whatever way he can. Whether tumalun sa tubig, maglakad sa tubig, magtago at sumunod sa kanya, he just wanted to be with Jesus. But he kept on failing. Can you relate to that? That we just Lord, gusto lang naman kitang sundin eh. Lord, alam mo naman, you know everything. You know I love you, Lord. But my heart, it fails. My strength, it fails. My flesh, it fails. How many of you, you just want to follow Jesus? How many of you, paulit-ulit nyo lang, I want to I wanna get back that high the first time I met Jesus. I, I want to bring back that passion, that fire in my heart. Pero Lord, ang hira. Parang. And, it, and, and it's just so hard. And Peter says, Jesus, alam mo naman, alam mo yun. I, I want to follow you, but my, but my heart, it fails me. And yet you see Peter just kept on coming back. He sees Jesus. Look, it's the Lord. Puts on the outer garment. Jumps to the ocean. Just keep on coming back to your relationship with him. Because it's not about, his focus was not about feeding the lambs or although that is God's command. But Jesus says, do you love me? That's what I want to know. Yes, I know you failed many times, but Peter, do you love me? Because your ministry should be anchored on a love relationship with me. It's not so much about our service, our ministry, though that is important, but the primary focus is our relationship with God. Sometimes when you and I, when we fail, especially church leaders, when we fail, there's what we call restoration. And sometimes our feeling is that we're only restored if people see us serving again. Pag nagkamali ka, minsan, step down ka muna sa ministry, wag ka muna kumilos. And sometimes we equate na I am already restored or I'm okay if I'm empowered to serve again. But that not, not, is not necessarily true. Why? Because Christ himself said, many of them, right? Many of them do things for me, but their hearts are far away from me. They do this, they do this, they do this, but I never knew them. Right? So you can serve all you want, and yet your heart is far away from the Lord. And so Jesus' focus here is, Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? It's going to be about our love relationship that will enable you to do that ministry. Last two points. Peter turned and saw the disciple whom Jesus loved, following them. And the one who also had leaned back against him during the supper and had said, Lord, who is it? Who is it that is going to betray you? And when Peter saw him, he said to Jesus, Lord, what about this man? And Jesus said to him, Sabi ni Peter, oh, paano siya? Kasi ka, Jesus just told Peter how he was gonna die. So tumingin si Peter, uy, si John. Sabi niya, paano siya? What about this man? 
And Jesus said to him, If it is my will that he remain until I come, anong pakialam mo? None of your business. What is that to you? What is that to you? I have another plan for this person and that person and this person. What is that to you? Why are you so concerned about it? And a lot of times, we compare ourselves. When we fail, we compare ourselves. Buti pa sila, hindi nagkakamali. Buti pa sila, hindi nag Or buti pa sila, hindi nag stumble. Eh ako, nako. Nandito ako. Nahuli na ako. But stop comparing yourself. What is that to you? We all have our own journeys. We all make mistakes. Jesus says, well, if that is my will that he remain until I come, what is that to you? You follow me. Right? You follow me. Obey and encourage others because that's what Christ told Peter. Peter, feed my lambs. Tend my sheep. Right? Encourage others. I love the prayer of Christ. Jesus said, Simon, Simon, behold, Satan has demanded permission to sift you like wheat. But I have prayed for you that your faith may not fail. And you, once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Why? I love that. Jesus basically said, you're going to fail. But I prayed that though you fail, that your faith will not fail. Magkamali ka man, pero kapit ka lang. Keep the faith. Don't let your faith fail. And once you have turned again, Jesus saying, bawal magfail, ha? When you follow me, bawal magfail, ha? That's not what he's saying. He's saying, when you fail, once you have turned again, strengthen your brothers. Because maybe you have turned and maybe another brother has failed. Help strengthen them. Or help others not to go through unnecessary failure. Right? Strengthen them. Maybe what you have learned from your own failure can encourage others who are failing. Or you can encourage them so that they do not fail, but strengthen them. And I think that's the beauty of discipleship. I think that's the beauty of, of being in, in D groups in, in, in this community, that you and I have, uh, have an opportunity to strengthen one another. And that's, that's our, whole, our, our whole purpose. You know, the reason why we have big is, is not simply just so that you can meet new friends or meet a future partner in life, but so that we can strengthen one another. So I don't know where, where we're at. I don't know what's going on in your life. But I just want to end with this verse. Romans chapter 8 verse 1 says, Therefore, there is now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. So alalahanin po natin, whatever past mistakes you may have had, if ever you are in the middle of a failure or a mistake, or maybe you're going to make mistakes in the future, remember this. If you are in Christ, His grace abounds, and there is now no condemnation in Him. Let's pray. Lord, salamat po sa reminder. Panginoon, uh, alam po namin that we will always fail. Alam po namin na uh, mayroon mga pagkakataon that 